Hello everybody, this is Shafiq and I welcome you all in this video of Electric Vehicle Modeling in MATLAB Simulink. Today in this video we are going to discuss on the major components of an electric vehicle, see how these components are connected with each other, that is the powertrain architecture and at the end we are going to run simulations to see vehicle performance. We will also find major vehicle performance parameters such as top speed, vehicle range, time it takes to reach from 0 to 60 km per hour overall fuel economy of the vehicle and so on. So let's begin our component level discussion to better understand how the simulation works. Here on the screen we have a working model of a front wheel drive EV propelled by 80 kW traction motor powered by a 24 kW hour lithium ion battery pack. This block here contains all the systems and subsystems of a typical EV powertrain. If we go inside this block we can see there is a driver, a controller, vehicle body itself and a dashboard to observe the vehicle performance as we run simulations. We will discuss on all these components one by one, but for now, let me show how all these components interact with each other. The driver here takes the reference velocity from the drive cycle data and feedback velocity from the vehicle. Based on these two inputs, it determines the acceleration and brake pedal positions which is then sent to the controller. The controller, based on the driver command and vehicle velocity, generates a torque command for the motor inside the vehicle. If the torque commanded by the controller is within the operational limit of the motor, the motor will generate necessary torque to drive the vehicle down the road. So like real life, driver generates the command, controller fine tunes the command and the vehicle executes the command. That is, the vehicle accelerates or decelerates. For component level discussion, I would like to start with the components within the domain of vehicle body. If we go inside the vehicle body block, we can see there is an electrical plant and a mechanical plant. Electrical plant takes motor torque command from the controller and motor speed from the drive line. Based on these two inputs, it generates motor torque which eventually goes to the wheel. It also computes battery state of charge, battery power and battery current data to be sent to the controller for taking future decisions. Mechanical plant or drive line consists of wheels and axles, differential, brakes and vehicle chassis. Let's focus on the electrical plant now. Once we enter the block, we can see on the top level, there is a battery pack and a traction motor. The traction motor receives torque command from the controller and draws power from the battery in the form of volt and amps to generate mechanical power in the forms of torque and speed. In this model, we have used a motor having a maximum torque of 280 Nm and a maximum speed of 10,000 rpm with a rated power of 80 kW. For those of you who are getting confused about how this block is a motor, we have said earlier that this is a mathematical model. We cannot put a physical motor inside a computer. We can, however, test a physical motor in the lab using dynamometer to record its performance at various loads and then use the data for mathematical modeling. That is what we have done here for almost all the components. And this is the usual procedure for all mathematical modeling in the field of engineering. The model electrical motor takes bus voltage motor torque command and motor speed as input and generates motor torque as output to be sent to the mechanical plant. This block takes all the electrical losses at different loading conditions into consideration thus behave as if it is running in the real life condition. Same goes for the battery as well. The model battery pack is a 24 kWh lithium ion battery having a nominal voltage of 355 volt. It has 96 cells arranged in series to get to the desired voltage level and two such strings is connected in parallel to achieve the required capacity. Both the battery and the motor is parameterized using lab test data. For now, I am just going to show the torque versus speed curve of the motor and OCV versus SOC curve of the battery cells. Now let's discuss on the mechanical plant. Both the tractive force and braking force enters the drive line which eventually goes to the wheel to propel the vehicle. This block also takes wind velocity and road inclination as other two inputs. Drive line takes all kinds of physical forces and moments, for example frictional forces in the drive line, aerodynamic forces of the vehicle and rolling resistance of wheel to calculate vehicle speed using standard formula of mechanics. When we talk about the torque generated by motor, we mean that power is generated in the motor shaft. For propelling the vehicle with this power, we will have to transfer this power from the motor shaft to the wheel of the vehicle via transmission, differential and axle. This is what we have done in the mechanical plant. If we go inside this block, we will see 
a rotational inertia block to model the rotational inertia of the motor shaft, a torsional block to model the torsion of the motor shaft, then the differential which splits the torque among the wheels, wheels and brake block that captures the longitudinal properties of the wheels as they roll on the road, and the vehicle body which rests on the wheels. Neither we have a variable speed transmission nor a torque converter in this model. Actually, all electric vehicles are designed without transmission shift mechanism. The complex mechanism of gearbox is being taken care of by the inverter unit in the electrical plant. However, in the differential block, we have a single speed reduction for our vehicle. Let's see what's inside the differential block. This differential block distributes the torque sent by the motor to the left and right axles where wheels are connected. Notice that we do not have any driving force in the rear axle since it's a front wheel drive only. The rear wheels are free to rotate as the vehicle moves. If we go one level up and enter the wheel and brake block, we will see that here we have modeled all four wheels of our vehicle. Separate colored portion represents front and rear wheels. Although we apply driving force in the front axles only, we apply braking force both to the front and rear wheels. Each of these wheel block captures longitudinal behavior of the wheel using magic formula coefficients. Each block takes into account parameters like wheel dynamic parameters, for example, wheel loaded and unloaded radius, wheel longitudinal parameters, rolling resistance, and applied brake force to predict longitudinal force and angular velocity of the wheel. The longitudinal force for front and rear axles computed by this block is sent to the vehicle body as input. The last component of the mechanical plant is the vehicle body. We all are very familiar with the shape of the vehicle body that physically holds all the systems and subsystems of the vehicle. Whatever we have discussed so far is placed within vehicle body and has a specific role to play to provide the driving power to aid the movement of the vehicle. This block considers both the traction force and opposing force acting on the vehicle and computes vehicle velocity using standard Newtonian formula. It also takes into consideration the longitudinal parameters, for example, vehicle mass, drag coefficients, and center of gravity, vertical parameters like lift coefficients, and vehicle suspension parameters to calculate the vehicle longitudinal velocity and normal reaction force. With that, we have discussed the major physical components of the drivetrain. Now, let's focus on the controller which controls all these physical components in a way that optimizes vehicle performance in order to maximize vehicle range. The controller acts as the brain of the vehicle and controls the operation of all the components using a closed loop control algorithm. Let's see what our controller does in this model. It takes the driver command that is acceleration pedal position and brake pedal position from the driver, vehicle velocity and motor speed from the mechanical plant and battery SOC from the electrical plant. Based on the algorithm program inside the controller, it determines motor torque command and brake command to be sent to the respective block for execution. As we enter this block, we can see it has four smaller subsystems and a larger subsystem, each assigned to a specific task. Let's go through them one by one. This block here estimates the wheel torque request based on acceleration parallel position. Inside it, we have a very simple algorithm which basically multiplies the acceleration parallel position that is a number from 0 to 1 where 0 means fully released and 1 means pedal fully pressed with the motor torque to find motor torque command. The 1 on the bottom estimates brake force based on brake pedal position. In this block, we also multiply brake pedal position that is a number from 0 to 1 with a constant force to determine the total braking force. If we go one level up and enter the battery management system, then we can see battery management system determines battery power charge and discharge limit based on battery SOC using simple lookup tables. Let's go to the top level and enter the region brake control block. We all know that electric vehicle has the advantage of recapturing some energy while braking using region braking that would otherwise get wasted in the environment as heat in friction braking. What portion of the total braking force should come from the region braking and what portion should be achieved by friction braking depends on the present vehicle speed and battery SOC. Though the algorithm in this block looks a little complex, let me tell you what it actually does. It first computes a region factor which is a number from 0 to 1 from the lookup table based on vehicle speed and battery charge limit. 
and then it distributes the total braking force accordingly to the friction brake and region brake. That is, if the region factor is 0.6, then 60% of the total brake torque will come from the region braking and the rest 40% will come from the friction braking. Let's go one level up. Lastly, we have the final component, the motor torque arbitration and power management system that determines the final motor torque command based on acceleration parallel position, battery charge limit, motor speed and motor torque command for region braking. If we go inside this block, we can see a switch that determines the torque command that enters the next block based on acceleration parallel position. If we enter this block, we can see there is several other subsystems which performs the following functions. This block converts the mechanical power demanded by the wheel to electrical power by multiplying the efficiency at the speed. Then checks whether the electrical power is within the limit of the system or not. Then again reconverts the electrical power to mechanical power. Then divides it by the motor speed to find motor torque. Finally, sends the motor torque command to the vehicle for execution. In a word, this block is all about keeping the final motor torque command within the operational limit of the motor in question. For the purpose of simplicity of this video, I will not discuss these subsystems any further. But if you wish to know in detail, please mail us with your query. With that, we have completed our component level discussions. Now we are ready to run simulations to see vehicle performance. So we have a front wheel drive EV of mass 1500 kg propelled by 80 kW traction motor and powered by a 24 kWh lithium ion battery pack. In order to check whether our model is working properly or not, we run simulation with a EPA certified US 06 drive cycle. A drive cycle is a velocity profile that we want our vehicle to follow. Let us first load the data in the drive cycle source. Apply and OK. And set the runtime for 230 seconds because that's how long the drive cycle is. And then press the run button. The simulation is going to load and then scope will appear as soon as the simulation starts. Here on the scope we can see our model is trying to follow the velocity profile in the drive cycle. When the simulation stops, we are going to have a closer look of the curve. If we zoom in, we will see that there are actually two lines. The yellow one is the reference velocity and the blue one is the vehicle actual velocity. As those two lines almost overlap with each other, we can say that our model is capable of predicting the simulated phenomenon properly. And now we can proceed for further analysis. Let us now find out vehicle top speed. To do that, let's assign the target speed to be 225 km per hour using a signal builder. And let's set the simulation time to 200 seconds and hit the run button. In the scope we can see though the target velocity is 225 km per hour, the vehicle could only achieve 183.8 km per hour. Let us consider another scenario where we have 5 passengers in the vehicle adding 500 kg weight to the vehicle's total weight. To do that, we go to the vehicle body block and change the vehicle mass to 2000 kg and run the simulation. Well, the simulation has stopped and we see the top speed here is 181.2 km per hour, a little less than the previous one due to the added mass to the vehicle. Now, let's check the time the vehicle takes to reach from 0 to 60 km per hour. Well, first we reset vehicle mass to 1500 kg.
and put a logical condition in the model to stop the simulation when the vehicle speed is 60 km per hour. And then run the simulation. The result shows that the vehicle takes 5.38 seconds to get to that velocity. If we want to decrease this time we can either replace the motor with a higher capacity motor or lower the drag coefficient of the vehicle or lose some vehicle weight if possible. Now let us check the vehicle range. We will find out vehicle range in two different driving conditions. In city driving using US 06 city cycle and in highway driving using US 06 highway drive cycle. For range finding, it is important to set maximum and minimum SOC limit of the battery. In this case, force the vehicle to stop when the battery charge is 10% by putting a comparator in the model. We set the battery to be 95% charged before the driving starts. Let's go to the drive cycle source and first run simulation for the city cycle. Put tick mark to repeat the cycle and set the run time to infinity and then hit the run button. The simulation starts and continue running until battery charge reaches 10% limit. This run will take some time to complete and run time may vary from machine to machine. I will just fast forward the video to reach to the result. Well, the simulation has stopped and now let's look at the results. As we open the scope, we can see the velocity profile for the entire runtime. Let's open the battery SOC curve to view the initial and final battery state of charge. And if we go to the top level, we can also see the total distance traveled by this car was 99.73 km for city cycle. Now let's run simulation for highway cycle by loading the data in the drive cycle source. And then hit the run button. We will observe the simulation to start and the scope will appear. Here also we will first forward the video and come back when the simulation is complete. As Simulink has finished the calculation, let's see the result. In the scope, we can see the decreasing battery SOC and reaching 10% limit as the simulation stops. On the other scope, we can see the full velocity profile for the entire runtime. And in the top level, we can see the range was 107 km for highway cycle, a little more than the city cycle. We have only seen a very few things that we can do with this model. In actuality, we can do a ton of other analysis using this model. You might want to know where you would get this model. The good news is, if you have MATLAB, you already have this model in the example section. However, I have modified this model a little bit for our discussion here. Thanks to MATLAB for putting it there for us. With that, we have come to the end of this video. Hope this video was helpful. If you have any question regarding this video, please let us know in the comment section. Once again, thanks for watching.